four Midwest guys presents and a good day to all of our loyal listeners if you exist out there welcome back to House Zanardelli our Game of Thrones season 7 recap of the episode I am your ho- lord and host John Zanardelli and I'm joined again by my lovely wife Stephanie hi everyone And we are recapping the episode Stormborn, which we have just finished watching about, was it eight minutes ago? Something like that? Sure. Okay. (laughs) Right. uh, And beforehand, uh, my lovely archmaestress of the Google here actually uh, took the time out to verify all the names and everything. Um, This was like your first time, like, actually, like, taking, like, a lot of notes during an episode. Yeah, my God. That was ridiculous. I was, (laughs) because I realized that from the last episode i was like you know we didn't take notes and you know i know we missed some things with bran and um myra i think her name is myra (laughs) anyway um so yeah so i we missed that talking about that and i'm like we got to take notes this time so i (laughs) sat here and wrote down like was jotting and, things like, down like, like every every insane. time a scene changed and every time and I, there's and like something, every something and something something new came up i was like okay uh, now I, one thing i hope about tonight's episode did you write down the scene transitions that we had during some of these uh episodes? no but they were pretty <laughs> nasty my god are you kidding me uh yeah we'll get to uh we'll get to a couple of those in a minute so um so yeah, tonight's episode, Stormborn, we kicked off with none other than the Daenerys herself. Daenerys herself. I mean, what better way to open an episode titled Stormborn than having a Targaryen back at her island, the Dragonstone, in the middle of a storm? While like, which apparently, um, sorry, our cat Tumblr is trying to make an appearance as well. I'm trying to claw um, off my jacket there, so, so of course our house sigil remains. So Tyrion, we open up with him saying telling Daenerys you know it's rumored that you were born on a night such as this with a bad rainstorm going through the the city yeah or through through the castle yeah I think had they actually pointed out that is why you are a storm born right? would have been I a mean, little too on the nose yeah seriously <laughs> but anyway yeah so we had a uh, Daenerys was yeah just basically Daenerys was with uh Valerius and Tyrion Mm -hmm. discussing, you know, their strategies and things like that. And basically, um, Tyrion told her up front, look, they're not going to welcome you with open arms. The great houses have to support you. And if they don't, then no one's going to follow you. Right. But then the scene quickly turned into a, you know, uh, Daenerys basically questioning the loyalty of Varys. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because she basically says, you know, who gave the order to kill me while she was, you know, a younger girl before all of this happened. And he's like, well, King Baratheon did. And she goes, yeah, but who told the assassins? Were you, were you, were you not also there And when you betrayed, did you betray my father? I mean, she was basically testing his loyalty because she knew that he'd been around mm-hmm. for the last time that her father... The was Mad King. The Mad King, who was, you know, when your dad's named the Mad King, you have to give some leeway as to why he was taken off the throne. But at the same time, she's she's rightfully wondering who her traitors are going to be, though. Well, who her traitors are, who her, who, who's going to be there through the thick and thin of it all. Is he going to turn on her if, if stuff goes bad? You know, what's going to happen? And he basically told her, you know, I'm, I want you, I choose you, you know, you're my queen. I know what you're capable of. And she basically confronts him and says, look, I appreciate all that, but if I'm failing, don't conspire against me. Just tell me to my face. (laughs) Or I will have you burned. Yeah. She, she said, (laughs) she told him, she goes, you know, if, if I find out that you conspired against me, I will burn you myself. (laughs) I would expect nothing less from a dragon. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, our scene ends with uh, our an appearance of another character that has been kind of silent for a couple episodes, and that is the Red Woman herself, Melisandre, has returned. And she basically, she pops in and says, you know, she's talking to, to Daenerys and Valerian, 
and tells her I was once a slave and this is how I know this speech and blah 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 and tells her that she has a role to play as does another and that's Who's, where was it going to be the uh, the prince of mm-hmm. was it what did she say it was to be uh, the prince of something mm-hmm. and then she says so is it a it's like you well, do she not goes, believe I'm, I'm not a prince it's like and then uh, her handmaiden essentially tells her misandre misandre essentially tells her like well your your translation is wrong there because it, can be it could be prince or princess. princess. It doesn't quite roll off the tongue, does it? <laughs> so this is where we get the, you know, I get, I guess Melisandre is, not Melisandre, but um, yeah, Melisandre. Dra, Melisandre and, or Melisandre? Sorry, they're so similar. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the red, red priestess basically tells Daenerys there's another and his name is Jon Snow, which perks up Tyrion. Because Tyrion knows this man to be of loyalty and good faith and good heart. and Right, and, and Tyrion and Jon haven't seen each other since, like, I think episode wall. one or episode yeah. two. Yeah. So, yeah, like, he says, I escorted him to to the wall, which that becomes another thing when Daenerys finally believes him, says, send a raven. And is like, send a raven and tell him to meet with me. And take a knee. <laughs> bend a knee. And bend a knee, yeah. So it's like, so in, in the course of two, two episodes, episodes, we've had mm-hmm. Jon Snow have two queens basically say, hey, come here and bend bend your knee to us. Mm-hmm. So we get to see which knee Jon will bend. <laughs> um, well, we still have to find out if Jon's going to accept. Right, but that, mm-hmm. yeah, and then another thing that will come into play is the raven that is sent is written by Tyrion, and Tyrion also gives that wonderful... That wonderful line that he had from season one, all dwarves are bastards in the eyes of their father. Mm-hmm. So Which that's... is why John knows it's actually Tyrion, and he's willing to, you know, accept Daenerys' request to come and see her. Right. So, But we're know. getting ahead of ourselves yes. because there is a quite a little mm-hmm. little passionate scene before, uh, isn't, yeah, this is before we cut there, like we see Grey Worm. Preparing? Oh no no we're, we're that, far from not, that dude. Is that, is that far from that? We're we're still we're, we've now come to Cersei speaking to. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the the I guess. The oh ha- the right, house the, of Tyrell, the, the traitors not, of Tyrell. Not really traitors so much as like the outcasts of House Tyrell because right. pretty much House Tyrell has been destroyed except for you know Elena the 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 grandmother. So yeah, <laughs> we all know where she's at. <laughs> So anyway, um, so you have Cersei speaking to these men, and one of them is Lord Tarly, which we all know is to be Sam's father. And um, he basically questions Cersei, and Cersei, the reason he questions her is she says, we have to stop Daenerys, we have to stop her armies, blah, 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 blah. And Lord Tyrell jumps in and goes, she has three dragons. How are we supposed to defeat them? You know, let me know how that works and yes, come back and to me. Didn't uh, didn't that's the same amount of dragons that Agar had when he took the Iron Throne the first time. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, um, as we go on, you know, Cersei and her maester are telling them, you know, hey, we'll find something out. We'll let you know. And it's being <laughs> checked into. It's like, how are you going to defeat the dragons? We're working on it. Yeah. So... You have Jamie find Lord Tyrell later on and say, hey, let's talk, chat, come on. And basically says, you know, you have to be loyal to us. Yes, you know, Cersei did this, all this stuff to the Tyrells, but, you know, you have to be loyal to your queen. You took an oath to us, too. And he goes, no, I took one to the Tyrells, and I have to follow it. He goes, yeah, but you you took one to your queen. And um, basically... Um, he's forcing uh, Randall Tarley to make a choice. You know, choose Tyrells and be against the Queen and possibly, you know, harm will come to him and his family. Or, um, you know, pick the Queen and, you know, become like the the Warden of the South or something like that, so... It, it's kind of ridiculous. It's it's kind of like up in the air. and It was a strange hand he was trying yeah. to play there. But um, 
then we see I mean, I mean that's we see Cersei and her medieval Dr. Frankenstein going downstairs to the... Uh, well, that's later on, but yeah, we can talk on, about that right? now. I mean, well, it, we can talk about that there, as a I mean, Well, am I leaving anything out so far? I mean, um, other than we see the Lord's uh, son, who has the most awkward name. Oh my God, that was awesome. Like, <laughs> which Jamie goes, uh, a Rickon. He's like, Dickon, sir. I'm like, oh, please don't let that be your name. <laughs> yeah, dude, you know? Anyway, um... So yeah, I mean later on we 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 see the maester and we see Cersei um go down into the basement of the of the kingdom of of the the castle and um you see all the dragons because Robert had them put there because he didn't want to look at them when he was walking around his castle. Basically not alive though, it's the skeletons it's of the, the skeletons, dragons, yeah. yeah. But it's it's all the skeletons that were once that once took over the king and kingdom. Anyway, um, the maester's down there and shows Cersei basically that, you know, the blacksmiths and whatnot have created this, like, crossbow. And it's just a big giant spear, like, crossbow to kill a dragon or, or wound it. Because he said if it can be wounded, it can be killed. So, now we have this going on. So, we saw that uh, in Varine, that the, or Marine that the uh, one that's one of Daenerys's dragons was injured with a spear and if it could be injured it can be killed, killed. yeah mm-hmm. you know so he gets the uh, the crossbone that took out Smaug I believe yeah right <laughs> right so anyway we're kind of done with that whole storyline which and the crossbow thing... looks quite effective it goes right through the skull of it right though. right through like the top the of the bone eye. Yeah. yeah so it's it can definitely like break through the bone of a dragon but it's got to get through the scales, though, too. Right. So I don't right. Yeah, it's scale. punching through the bone, but you got to go through those scales first. Right. So let's let's hope the scales are you know have more integrity than the bones. <laughs> yeah, more depth. <laughs> yeah. More density. <laughs> um. So moving on from that storyline, because that one's pretty much done for right now. You see Jorah, Mormond, um, who basically is told by the Archmaester he's got twenty years till he dies. Um, from the from the the grayscale uh, death, or six months until his mind goes crazy and he loses his, you know, marbles. He becomes like the dragon scale zombie that we saw before that touched him. Grayscale, yeah, or grayscale, grayscale zombie. zombie mm-hmm. Yeah. And Archmaester says, "There's really nothing else we can do because your your it's disease like, is so far gone, and you know, sorry." We're out. If if you were being if you were anybody else, I would tell you to leave the citadel immediately. But seeing as how you you're are a knight, a former a knight, I'll give you one more day, one more day here. to stay. <laughs> and of course, we have our lovely little cutaway of Jorah looking at his sword, which is essentially what he's. Well, because the archmaster kind of you know briefly glanced at it, and you know in a nice way without saying it, hey, kill yourself. Yeah, like that's your only option right yeah. now is death. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, there's nothing in, like, the, the history or the history that's out there that says, hey, you can cure the grayscale. Mm-hmm. But, you know, of course, Sam being Sam thinks there's there's got to be something. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you know he's going to start digging through the Citadel. Mm-hmm. Uh, then what do we come to? So, I mean, if you want to keep up with that story, he does kind of, he does kind of talk to the Archmaster. Later well, on. Well, I want to get to a nice cutaway there. That's that's our first in our series well, no, of great what? cutaways. Well, what cutaway? Uh, where we cut away from Grey Worm's interaction to the book on the wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I get these right. little, like, little technical well, for, first. Stuff. Okay, sorry. First of all, that we haven't even reached that yet, so we're good. So right now we're going into Asha Greyjoy, which is Theon's sister, and you see her with. Uh... Oh, hold on! Oh, Sorry. right, we have uh, Tyrells. Hang on. Sorry, this is on my notes. Ilaria, Ilaria uh, Martell, and Elena Ty- and Elena Tyrell. All of these <laughs> names are just. <laughs> um. <laughs> Martell and Tyrell. Mar- yeah. <laughs> We've got the Martells, the Tyrells. Ilaria, and Elena, Asha, you know. Anyway. And the um, she was. <laughs> so, uh, basically, they're all there talking with Daenerys and Tyrion and, you know, and Melisandre. And 
talking about, you know, what what's the, the plan is, plan? what's the battle plan. Right. And Elena Tyrell is sitting there going, you know, they won't obey you unless they fear you. So, and Daenerys is not about fear so much as she is about this is her and she'll burn your ass if you don't respect her. Right. Well, I mean, but she also says, I don't want to be the queen of ashes. So right. they're like, why don't you just send the dragons in to like lay away? So it's like, I am not going to burn down 10,000 people. And I, <laughs> so when she replies with, I'm not going to be the queen of ashes, that's when you have Elena just go, my daughter used to be loved by the people. Now she lies in ashes. Granddaughter. granddaughter. <laughs> He's like, my granddaughter used to be loved by the people. And now she lies in ashes in yeah. Westeros. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, you know, there's the queen of ashes she's kinda, out she's there. She's kind of not so thrilled about that part. Yeah. But Daenerys uh, makes it um, known to all three of these women that she will not attack King's Landing. That she is going to basically starve the city and make Cersei just implode, right. I think. So, yeah, what she wants to do is she wants to send people of Westeros to attack Westeros and this way, so there doesn't seem to be like any of the foreign invasion out there, ta- like like foreigners taking over the land. So she's sending the foreigners to take, or so Tyrion comes up with a plan to send the foreigners to basically send the Unsullied and, and the, the Dothraki, Dothraki to Casterly Rock, which mm-hmm. kind of makes everyone that doubted Daenerys's plan a little happy about that because they thought, oh well, we're whis- risking our people. What are you doing? Oh, you're going to take the Lannister home. She she wants the the Dornish army and the Tyrell army to take over King's King's Landing. Right, they're going to be the ones to yeah starve them out. And then, like like my husband said, you know, Casterly Rock is going to be overtaken by the Unsullied and the Dothraki, which is the foreign quote unquote the foreign invaders. Um. So yeah. Anyway, um. After everything's talked about, every like he like John said, all the women, all the queens and whatnot, they're thrilled. They're like, "Yeah, this is a great idea. We love it. We're on board. Let's do this." Um, Alana is is asked to stay behind because Daenerys would like to speak with her, and Daenerys tells her, "You know, I'm promising peace. I don't want, you know, hatred. I don't want." you know fighting or any you know anything bad you know and lady helena says offers her advice and says do you know about she says you know these men that wanted wanted to tell me how to run my kingdom and daenerys goes yes you know okay she goes i ignored them (laughs) it's like you know how i stayed alive with Mm -hmm. all these people who told me how to run my kingdom and Mm -hmm. all these these smart men, these advisors, and these soldiers, and how did I stay alive? Is I ignored them. Mm-hmm. It's like, and you are a dragon. Yeah, she. she like, said, you're not do you want to be a sheep? Or it's like, no. you're not a sheep. You're a dragon. dragon. Be a dragon. Be a dragon. Mm-hmm. Which should be on a T-shirt somewhere. Oh that, my god, I think that, that's that's, like, that's gonna be like the new T-shirt from that, tonight's that's, episode. That's be a next, dragon. That's the next T-shirt next to <laughs> you. I am the god of tits and wine. Yeah, Come that on. should definitely be up there. I mean, that, um, that's awesome. Right, and then we get to the scene that uh, I didn't think about how far I jumped ahead on this, which was uh, uh, the Grey Worm scene. Let's get it on. Oh yeah, and uh, you can almost hear you can almost hear Marvin Gaye in the background playing, couldn't you? <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean seriously. <laughs> oh man, it was wrong of me just sitting there going, oh. It's wrong that I want to see this so badly because God damn it, these two are so cute. <laughs> So Grey Worm, ha- Grey Worm and Missandre have to say goodbye to one another because Grey Worm's going to Casterly Rock, and Missandre is staying with Daenerys. Right. So she said, "You're just you're you're not even going to say goodbye. It's like you were just going to leave." <laughs> and he says, "Well, yeah, you're my weakness." And and she goes, she kind of, you know, took that to mean something awful. And he's like, "No, I'm brave. I'm unsullied. Like is- I'm." Ev- strong. He he laid down everything he's mm-hmm. had to go through. He's not the biggest. He's not the tallest. I've had to overcome all this stuff. I've had to overcome all these weaknesses to basically be the strong Unsullied. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was the strongest until I met you. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, getting it on. Um, and even though he still remains Unsullied, I mean, he... 
finds a way to make her very happy, which Mm -hmm. there's, and as we were talking about with the cutaways, there was one that was really great, which, you know, it looks like he's going down on her and he just, (laughs) but he looks like he's going down and then he just, she makes like this move, like her back arches and you think she's reaching for the bed and it cuts away to being back at the Citadel as this hand reaches for a book and pulls it off the shelf. The Archmaester, yeah. The Archmaester's Seriously, pulling the dude. book off the shelf. I was like, oh, are we cut? Oh, 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 okay. All right. We're in the Citadel now. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was so funny. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Which, and as we go back to the Citadel here, we so- learned that Sam has discovered that there might actually be a cure for advanced uh, dra- uh, grayscale. grayscale. God, mm-hmm. I keep wanting to call it dragon scale. Yeah, I don't know no. why. Did someone call it dragon scale at one point? No. Or, no. Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> so Sam Sam has has found a cure, quote unquote, for grayscale, and it's um, it's by an archmaster pile, piles, yeah, and um. He tells the his his archmaster that he's learning from. Hey, why can't we do this? And the guy basically is ignoring the crap out of him until finally Sam is like, "Hey, look at me." He's like, "Well, why this could be my moments this? and this is my moments." He's like, "Well, this this one guy who developed this plan." And then the archmaster turns to him and says, yeah. "Do you know, do you know, how, know how that one man died? Grayscale. Advanced dragons, advanced yeah. grayscale. Well, I did it again. Jeez." I mean, it was it was like, "Well, you have to try." So anyway, um, after that, um, basically he's told to forget it and not worry about it, that there's nothing they can do. But Sam being Sam cannot do that. So we well, see not Jorah. just Sam being Sam, as we discover that night, there's a reason why Sam won't let Jorah, you know. Well, he won't, he won't. Give up. Give up because he finds out earlier in, earlier in the day that what Jorah's last name was and whose family he comes from. Which, and to Sam, that's like the end all be all because that was his captain at the wall and he was there with Captain Mormon when he was killed and when he died. So he will not let Jorah die. He won't. Which Lady Mormon has one hell of a family. Like, And did you look up the lineage? Am I right that Jorah and the captain were all in that family? Well, that was his, the, the captain was his father. Yeah. And Jorah's her uncle. So, yeah, they're, that lady's got one hell of a family. I'm just going to mm-hmm. say that. <laughs> but, and again, props to the makeup team for this because they... They're working with like multiple layers on this well, this before grayscale you, stuff. Before you get into the grayscale, you have Jorah writing basically a goodbye letter to Khaleesi. Yeah. And oh yeah. And you see him looking at his sword, and you kind of figure what's what he's leading up to, and that's where Sam kind of just comes in and says, "Hey, how's it going? Drink <laughs> it's like, this. What are you doing here? It's like, and he's he's <laughs> wheeling in his cart, but instead of like books or a piss pot or you know some food or whatever, there's like all of this these like tools his to- and- like surgical tools and and bowls and ointments and everything and he's going to perform the you know the unspeakable treatment cure for the for cure that scale. does not get practiced he's like here bite down on this because well first if- he says drink all of that drink all of this rum <laughs> well before he does he takes a drink himself of course but he said, yeah, if anybody discovers me doing this, you know, we've all had it. We're both in trouble, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. which, you know, when he's miraculously cured, they're gonna suspect something. Unless, mm-hmm. I don't know, I mean, like, th- this might hurt him later. I don't know, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. But, is that, can I can I give the props now to the yes, makeup team for this? Thank because, mm-hmm. holy shit, um... Yeah, so you learn that not they're not just applying a layer of rather convincing grayscale over Jorah, but basically the procedure is he has to peel off all of these like scales, which is essentially as as the the as the drawing put it that he's looking off of, he's essentially having to basically skin him alive. Mm-hmm. And 
as you're seeing this, you know, the scaling coming off, I mean, you see him like getting the knife under and everything. And it's, there's another layer underneath. It's, it's gruesome to watch. It is very convincing. And yeah, like major props. Cause I'm sitting there thinking, okay, they had to do the one layer to go over Jorah to look like the blood and everything. And then they had to put the dragon or the grayscale over it. That was able to be peeled and still look like it's part of his skin being ripped off. And, and as, the, and as he gets the layer off and he goes to put the knife in something Again, we get our wonderful cutaway where we get a nice close-up of a pot pie being picked into by yes, Arya. Yeah. <laughs> no, with, with somebody sitting at a table across from Arya. Just across yeah. from Arya. <laughs> yeah, it was really, yeah, that was nasty. Because oh, you see God. all this, like, all this stuff, all the juices of a pot pie, and you can just imagine it's, like, <laughs> pus and, yeah, I'm a nurse, so. And you wonder blah. why I don't eat pot pie, Steph. <laughs> no, I don't. You ate one at your mother's, so I don't want to know. Anyway, um, so speaking of Arya, hey, Arya uh, reunites, is sitting at the bar and reunites with an old friend that uh, she left at the bar to protect him or he thought she was a boy at the time but anyway basically she left him there to protect him from you know where she was headed right which again i I thought she said his name i couldn't uh... i want to say it was hot pie Hot pie, yeah. I think she called him hot pie or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that was just messed yeah. Up well, because he was he was always good at cooking, and he finally found a way to like you know to mm-hmm. cook. Mm-hmm. And as great as as she's eating the bread or whatever, she's like, "Oh, this is so good." And he says the secret, mm-hmm. and she's like, "That's what I forgot to do." He's like, "Oh, so you've made a couple pot pies, one or two? Yeah, well, <laughs> you you you've made some pies in, in your pot, one uh, or two. So anyway, it was really funny. So um. Hot Pie, I'm hoping that's his name. Oh, we're just going to call um, him Hot Pie. Yeah, we'll just call him Hot Pie. She, uh, he talks to her about Brienne, um, asked if Brienne ran, a, ran into her. She said yes. Um, and he says, well, I guess you'll be going on to Winterfell then. And no, I'm going to King's Landing. Why would I go to Winterfell? The Boltons run it. And Hot Pie tells her um no the, all the boltons are dead after the battle of the bastards john snow retook winterfell so her eyes you can oh almost see God. him light up and she was just like moment. you know what huh my brother half brother <laughs> it's like my yeah. brother and my sister <laughs> well she didn't know about her doesn't sister about, okay she didn't he didn't talk about sansa he just talked about john hmm. so she's very excited and um when she uh leaves the bar she has to decide whether she's going to continue on to king's landing and you know seek out what she needs to do right. and she, kill she gets on her horse and like there's you see like this people going there saying oh i hope you make it to king's landing and he, she They're looks like she's south. about to yeah. go from how we're watching the right side of the screen and then you know that uh winterfell's to the left to the north <laughs> so God love so, you, Arya, for having some sense of humanity back in you. She turns left and goes right back to, she goes to, to King's North, Landing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm saying left. It's the left side of our screen. Oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, she's headed back to Winterfell. Awesome. Um, John gets another freaking note from a raven. Hey. Um, oh, that raven from... Um, Sam. Uh, from... Oh yeah, the Sam, this, Sam's note about uh... the, this one is from Sam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Sam is telling him what he's found out about the dragon glass and how there's a whole mountain of it underneath Dragonstone itself. So um, this basically kind of I want to say pushes John into the hey, let me go talk to Daenerys because we need allies. We need that dragon glass. Like, we want to mine your, uh, your to home mine, there. Yeah, we need to <laughs> mine the crap out of this stuff and bring it back here because you all don't know what these White Walkers can do. Right. I do. I mean, so right now, I mean, we're having people torn between two battles. You've mm-hmm. got you've got John who he's got some mind of what's going on but he's more concerned about the white walkers Mm -hmm. but then you have sansa reminding him hey cersei's still out there she's a crazy crazy woman that has lost all of her kids that wants to kill everyone Mm -hmm. 
we need you, we need our king of the north here. And God damn it, Sansa, when you open your mouth and then these, you know, these hall meetings, it just goes bad for John every time. Well, to be fair, um, you know, their king is telling him, hey, I need to leave. I'm taking Stavros with me. Davos. Or, Davos, thank yeah. you. And we're going to go check this out with Daenerys. And Sansa's like, well, it can be a trick. And she could kill you. And then where are we left? Right. And he's like, well, it could be. And she could. And that's just a chance we have to take. Because he has to talk to her about that dragon glass. Right. And hopefully she will actually, you know, be open-minded and listen. Instead of saying, hey, I'm your queen. Take a knee. And I don't want you to talk at all. So, <laughs> well, we'll see which way our dragon goes. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah, he finally he decides to leave yeah. and he tells he tells Sansa is like the north will not be without a king. I leave him in your hands in my absence. Mm-hmm. I appoint you ruler in my absence. Well, because he tells he tells the the people of the north. I didn't ask for this this title as king. Mm-hmm. You all gave it to me. I never asked for it. Or I never wanted it. to be I never it. Accepted it. And I never accepted it. He said, "You know, I'm not leaving our kingdom in peril. I'm leaving it with the best person I know who will take care of it, and, that and that's f- my sister." And that fucking smirk from Littlefinger the mm-hmm. second he heard that, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we get. You know, we have we have John go down to the tombs, the family crypt, the family crypt, yeah. you and know. he's and he's basically standing there and and you know, looking at his quote unquote father, mm-hmm. the man who raised him. Yes, yeah. but then we also have uh, Littlefinger coming back into the crypt as well, and basically bothering John, bothering during get, his family time. He. A little finger needs to stay the hell out of that crypt. This isn't the first time he's been down there. No, no. And it's just... Uh, we have another little harbinger of bad things coming. I right? Just, well, because the jerk... Um, sorry, little finger. Uh, basically, little he comes prick. down there. Little prick, yeah. That works too. Little prick comes down there and <laughs> tells John and pronounces his love for Sansa he's saying I love her just as much as I loved your mother your stepmother as I, I loved Catelyn as much as I love Sansa it's like oh you creepy little bastard right. so John you know being a good being brother being the Jon Snow that he is being the Jon Snow and a good brother that he is basically shoves the guy up against a wall and says if you touch hands her hands around the throat and everything basically choking him too okay um if you touch her, I will kill you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, John leaves Winterfell in the hands of his sister, and you have this little, you know, thing that's just kind of waiting in the wings. So we'll see what happens there in the coming yeah. episodes. So, because well, Sansa's not as dumb as she looks. I mean, she no, knows what not. he wants. She's not. She's very. She's very seasoned. She's seen the ugliness of the Seven Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's not... And it's just, like, just when you think that she's gone from one misery to another, everything just has been piling on worse for Sansa. And so she's... She knows what can can happen. She knows what the worst-case scenario in every situation can be, probably. And, and I'm kind of hoping that she takes advice or, or, or takes, you know, time with Lady Mormon. And Lady Mormon kind of, <laughs> you know says hey you can't trust anybody anybody at all you know you think you can trust this little creepy guy that's a bad idea how nice would it be if lady mormon and sansa had a moment in this show yeah, we'll if that see. if that happens mm-hmm. that would just that just be that'd be a great little moment mm-hmm. <laughs> all right so from there so as from you- there we go on to um aria like i said is heading toward winterfell and you see her you know basically in a forest because god oh. forbid if she's not in a freaking forest <laughs> right um it's basically so camping she, not even camping just has she's a fire just has a fire and her horse is there and the horse gets spooked and the next thing you know you hear stuff in the background and you're like oh crap you know what's going on and it's wolves and i knew right away i'm like dude those are dire wolves <laughs> fuck yeah and um so 
who appears, but her dire wolf. The one that from season one, one. she had to chase away with yeah. rocks because, well, for everyone. I mean, if you're listening to this, you obviously was, know what happens th- in the show. I so. think it was Lemuria. 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 Yeah. yeah that uh, she knew that uh, Joffrey would have to essentially like kill like kill her dire wolf for attacking him joffrey wasn't gonna kill him no no of course not a little shit but um but the 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 dire wolf was supposed to die and so she just chased him off to keep him alive her keep her yeah right keep her alive i'm sorry um and so you know teeth are bare growling Arya's looking at him looking at her recognizes her puts her sword down says i'm coming back to winterfell she holds out her hand and then it doesn't look at her like a wolf. It looks at her like, you know, your pet husky would. Like, it gets, it gets yeah. the eyes, the husky eyes. It's Lemuria like basically recalls who it is. Because mm-hmm. she kept saying, it's Arya, it's Arya. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, co- I'm going to go home. I want you to come with me. Please come with me. And, um, yeah, so... Lemuria... Unfortunately, you know, she, yeah, she just she just walks away. Just turns away, yeah. Because she, all those years ago, she was basically... She was a pup. She was a pup, and she didn't understand, and she just knows that her owner kind of banished her, so... Yeah, chased her off. Like. She... She, um... She doesn't do anything to harm Arya. She basically tells all the other surrounding wolves... Basically and they to all leave, yeah. Leave, yeah. So, um... That's how that ends... Yeah. So, uh, Please come back, Lumeria. Mm. We need. I mean, we need some some dire wolves alive. Please. Well, Ghost is still out there. Too, well, I know Ghost it? is still out there. I know, but it'd be nice to see more than one. Mm, yeah. That's, so we have two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come um, back to Winterfell. So then we uh, kind of open up to Asha Greyjoy and. Ilaria Sand <sighs> Martell um, again they're sailing Marvin Gaye getting it on oh man, oh, this one kind of comes out well, of nowhere were, they, you know? oh, seriously well okay it, it works her way into it but Asha, Asha can go either way and she doesn't care as long as the legs are open Oh, but but, there, but as we saw, there was the foreign invasion. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that was hilarious. Oh my gosh, it was like, poor Theon throughout this entire ending. Poor Theon. I mean, he's basically sitting there watching uh, his sister. His sister, like at first, she's like drinking ale. the uh, drinking the ale, going, "Oh, how can you drink this? It's not for me." Oh, that's not his sister. That was that was Alaria. Alaria, yeah, Alaria is drinking the uh, piss water. This piss water. It's like, ah, when I bring you back to Dorne, I will give you some Dorne. She's like, well, I can develop a taste for it or go either way. And then you just see them both kind of giving each other a glance, like, "Whoa, okay." She's like, "Oh, I'll have another round of this." He's like, "I thought it wasn't for you. I'm developing a taste for it." I'm like. There we go. So this guy just she's got some game. She's really got mm-hmm. some game on this show. Yeah, she does. Um, and then Uncle Cockblocker well, shows no, up. No, no, no. For I mean, there's like a huge like you hear a big giant noise and the boat I guess stops or something I don't know but it just makes you're like a giant explosion shift, or whatever yeah. yeah so something rocks the boat yeah. and unfortunately it's not the two ladies yeah so Asha and Theon run up the stairs uh, Ilaria stays downstairs and here comes Uncle Euron Uncle Euron <laughs> says hi crazy as shit spears the, the shit out of like Asha's boat, right, and drops his boarding like bridge right on top of a guy on the bridge. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I was busy writing, so yeah. Holy anyway. shit! I mean, then, I mean, right on a lesser show, that would have been their you know cliffhanger for the next episode. No, this went all out. We got the full battle. Naval battle. Yeah, yeah the naval was, battle mm-hmm. we had swords and people it's killing the axes and... the uncle's like wielding this axe and just like cov- drenched in blood and, like just slaughtering everyone maniacally the two dornish sisters the the uh, 
sand snakes yeah, they the show two, up. Yeah, the two sand snakes help, show up to try to it. To help Asha and Theon. Right, but the uncle Euron. kills them both. Mm-hmm. Well, two out of three. Two out of three, right. Because the, the one who in an earlier scene was basically said how much, you know, I want to protect my mother. No, well, the younger one. The, the younger, younger one, one. Mm-hmm. goes to protect the, the mother down below, who the mother is taken prisoner we can as, assume, well as, as well as the we daughter. Assume, yeah, that the mm-hmm. daughter's taken prisoner. But yeah, the other two he kills. And essentially he... T- um, God, this is why I say poor Theon, because when... Well, for... So, Ilaria and her daughter get kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you see Asha and Euron go at it, because, mm-hmm. you know... That's that's a battle we've been waiting for too because right. Asha wants to be queen of the Iron Islands, and she was supposed to be, but Euron shows up and takes that away from so, her. So yeah, basically he's there to cock block her at every. Yeah. So, well, that's not even the right phrase. I don't want to say the other phrase. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, but, but yeah, he's there basically to ruin Asha's life. So Asha. Um, and him have a fight and basically in the end you see Theon you know being called out and Theon because Asha's at Euron's mercy like axe like yeah, he's holding he's, on to her with an axe to her throat. throat yeah and Theon you know is called to do something or you know whatever but Theon panics on, you cockless coward <laughs> panics as he has before and just runs away Right. He jumps into the water and just Asha's left, you know, crying because her brother has mentally down. broken down and let her again. down yeah. again for the umpteen time. And she just she doesn't know what to do. And she's taken away with Ilaria and the one of the sand snakes. And, and the other two are basically hung and speared into the mast. Yeah. And. And that's where our show leads off. And Theon is left all alone. Right. Again. He's basically left hanging on a piece of plank in the water as, as the, the, uh, as, the, the as the Greyjoy fleet disappears, is burning. Backs into the, which is kind of weird to watch this mm-hmm. battle take place because you got Greyjoy versus Greyjoy. The the boats. Mm-hmm. You know, well, the good Greyjoy, all their fleet, they got torched. Yeah, which there went that uh, fleet. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so that's where we end our show. And, yeah, quite the rush there at the end. Um, yeah, where, I mean, where do you think it's going to go from here? Mm, I really don't know. Now that the... Um, now that, that the Dorn princess, queen, whatever you want to call her... Yeah, Dorn is... Has now uh, been kidnapped. The Dornish army may show up on their own just to to get her as well as the Tyrellian army yeah, with them. It, it may not so. be a smart move on Cersei to basically try to take prisoner the people who are trying to overthrow you. I mean, but if that, you, that's the only cause she has left or the recourse she has left. If you notice when, when they were talking about the attack plan, Greyjoys were never brought up. It was the Dornish and the Tyrellian army were going to go attack King's Landing. There was no discussion about Greyjoy. Right. Basically, oh, basically yeah, the yeah. Greyjoys were there to get the Dorn princess or queen or whatever you want to call her mm-hmm. to Dorn to have her armies come back up and attack King's Landing. So you think this was the uh, priceless gift that uh, the uncle was promising oh, yeah. Cersei? Oh, yeah. Well... Thank God it's not Tyrion. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, I, I think everybody in the show would have just uproared. Yeah, I think was it uh, Tyrion and Daenerys are like the two, you know, if you kill them, we are going to lose all faith in where the show heads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so thankfully they're working together, though. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's. Um, yeah, wow, that that is definitely a way to leave an episode off because it's it's really gonna it's up in the air it's up in the air i mean it's making things a lot more you know how do i put it you don't know where you you it it's not at all predictable is right what it is well it's making the stakes so dire now for every kingdom mm-hmm. like like you said is like dorn and uh tyrell. I don't know, tyrell are gonna basically attack them 
because this idiot's uh, gift <laughs> that he thinks he's doing the right thing again, which, you know, for as but bold as he is, he's not that bright. So the, prob- <laughs> the problem with that is, is Dorn may attack, which is fine, mm-hmm. but then you have House Tarly, who is kind of on the fence because of what Jamie was saying. Right, right. You know, so. you swore an oath to both, you know, Tyrell, and you swore an oath to um, your queen. <laughs> or else face the wrath of Oathkeeper. You know, or <laughs> like, you know, so basically either you're going to die or you're going to, you know, love your queen and support your queen. Right. So Tarly has to make a choice now. And we have we just have to wait and see what that choice is. <laughs> fuck King's Landing and fuck the queen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, yeah. you know. But again, we tune in every week. We love this show. We love how we just love how they stack the deck right now. It's just the uh, the Lannister house is just going to keep doing such crazy crazy shit and god, I'm just I'm I'm loving the ride right now. You know, I mean, I just I this is why I tune in every week. So, um yeah, any other, like, uh, final thoughts? Something we saw from the trailers, anything? Or mm. Archmaestress? <laughs> no, I'm... I, basically, I'm just excited to see where it goes. I don't want to, you know, stipulate or not stipulate. I don't want to... Um, Try to predict where it's going to go. Yeah, because yeah. if I predict that, it's just going on, basically... I would be dumb if I did that, because this show has a way of completely just changing the shit out of your predictions right oh god i think the red wedding has definitely proven that to all of us we've all experienced so much heartbreak through the show for that reason i mean (laughs) it's like you didn't see that coming yeah you know there's a lot of scenes where you're like oh crap um yeah (laughs) yeah so but we got um yeah we got a couple kill counts they're they're not huge but uh our two sand snakes Mm -hmm. have have bitten the dust Mm mm-hmm if I'm not mistaken, one of them is our Oscar nominee. So, uh, Keisha Castle Hughes from Whale Rider mm-hmm. back in 2003. But, uh, yeah. So it's uh. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes next week. Next week, uh, John's supposed to come and talk to his <laughs> that's aunt. That's right. We see in the trailer. <laughs> We're supposed to supposed to talk to his aunt for the first time ever. Tiny little family reunion. <laughs> Let's see if R plus L equals J is going to get revealed in that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't th- that- I don't think anybody else knows what r plus l equals j is right on- well except for bran well let me put it this way <laughs> i know you all who are listening know are all fans or but and and you know true fans and stuff like that but i'm talking about on the show i don't think right. you know they have exposed all of that to you know daenerys and- well, only bran knows yeah. for sure mm-hmm. <laughs> bran knows Brand- and Brand he and ain't Ned. telling anybody and <laughs> And Ned's definitely not telling anyone. Mm. <laughs> Rest in peace, Ned Stark. Yeah. All right. So I uh, guess that brings our show to a conclusion here. Uh, I guess, we yes, you can find us on the uh, four, the number four MidwestGuys.com website uh, through our podcast as well. Uh, we've also been putting up some episodes on YouTube. If you've uh, been one of our five viewers from last week that we discovered, um, if you discover the show, if you like us, um, feel free to share. If you don't like us, feel free to let us know what uh, we can do to how we can how we can change it. How how do we be sound more appealing to you or anybody else who would right. want to listen? Right. How how do we separate ourselves from the other podcasts out there and make this more interesting for you all? But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just enjoying. I'm enjoying being able to, like, put our daughter to sleep at, like, 8.30 and just come downstairs and have, like, actual adult time where we can watch something as as fucked up as Game of Thrones and just be, like, the, uh, just finally have, like, our, our, our adult time to, like, to watch this, like, crazy twisted shit and muse all over it, you know, like we love doing. Mm. So this is, this is, like, our adult time to, to be able to do this, so... So thanks for joining. Yes, and thank you, daughter, for being asleep these last couple hours. So until then, I will bid you all a fond farewell.